Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. My name is Avinash Upadhyay. I am a senior product manager for AWS Backup. And today I'll talk about our recent launch, AWS Backup for Amazon S3. So here is the agenda for today's talk. I will start by giving an overview or introduction to AWS Backup and how AWS Backup centralizes data protection across AWS. I will then talk about our recent launch, AWS Backup for Amazon S3. I will also give a demo of how it works. And then I'll open up for questions and answers. So before I introduce AWS Backup, let me give a brief overview of what we heard from our customers. Our customers told us that they need centralized data protection. In today's time, customers use multiple services to build and manage their applications. You, as an application developer, you will be using compute services, you will be using block storage, file storage, you will be using different databases. What customers told us is that, they want a simplified way to manage data protection across all the services. Customers also want to prove compliance of their data protection policies when they are creating backups or storing the backups. They need to make sure that their backups are compliant with the policies that their organizations need to adhere to. And finally, customers want cost optimization. Customers told us that they would prefer automated solutions that can help them create and protect their data. Customers asked for such automated solutions so that they can reduce their cost of building their own solutions to create and manage backups. Listening to this voice of customer, we launched AWS Backup in January 2019. AWS Backup is a centralized automated service that centralizes data protection across multiple AWS services. You can define a single data protection policy in AWS Backup to centrally automate data protection of compute, storage, and database services that you are using to de develop and manage your applications. Apart from centralizing data protection, AWS Backup also helps you to improve your data resiliency and business continuity. We allow you to restore your backups with a few simple clicks or with a single API call. And with this simple restore experience, you can ensure business continuity whenever there is a data disruption event. AWS Backup also allows you to ensure that your protected data is compliant. You can use the advanced dashboards in AWS Backup to manage and track compliance of your protected data. And you can also use AWS Backup to generate simple auditor-friendly reports that you can use to demonstrate compliance. So this is an introduction to AWS Backup. We have been innovating in AWS Backup at a very high pace since our launch in 2019. Our innovations have been focused on four pillars. Our first pillar of innovation has been the focus on adding support for stateful AWS services. These are the different AWS services which you can back up using AWS Backup. And the latest edition is S3, about which I will talk in more detail. Our second pillar of innovation has been the focus on improving compliance and governance for your protected data. These are some of the innovations that we have made in this aspect. The major highlight among them being Backup Audit Manager and Backup Vault Lock, about which I will briefly talk in today's session. And there is also a lot of material available online about Backup Audit Manager and Backup Vault Lock, which you can read after today's session. Our third pillar of innovation is focused on improving the platform for AWS Backup so that our customers can have a simplified experience. And our final pillar of innovation has been focused around supporting backups outside AWS. 
in reInvent 2021, we announced backup for VMware running on premises and VMware on cloud. So now that you have seen the pace of innovation in AWS backup, let's talk about our today's announcement, which is general availability of AWS backup for Amazon S3. Customers wanted S3 to be included in the centralized data protection capability of AWS backup that spans multiple AWS services across compute, storage, and databases. And listening to this voice of customer, we added S3 to the centralized backup and restore capability in AWS backup. This new launch enables customers to centralize and automate backup of their application data that is stored in Amazon S3 alone or that is stored in S3 along with other AWS services. This launch also allows our customers to restore their application data that is stored in Amazon S3 to a point in time in the past with a few simple clicks. And finally, this launch allows you to simplify monitoring of your compliance for S3 backups. Let us now look into details in uh, it, at each of the each of the three benefits that I described here. Also, before that, the AWS backup for Amazon S3 is available in all AWS regions except China, South America, and Government Cloud. Uh, we will launch this feature in China and South America by the end of March 2022. Before doing a deep dive into the feature, here is one common question that I often get from customers. The question is, when should they use AWS backup for Amazon S3? And when should they use some of the other industry leading features that are already provided by S3? Customers also told us that they plan to use both the set of features hand in hand. AWS backup is not an alternative to the industry leading features that are already provided by S3. AWS backup complements the industry leading features that are provided by S3. If you are a backup administrator who needs to centrally manage backup and restore across compute, storage, and database services, then you can use AWS backup for Amazon S3. If you are a storage administrator or an application developer who needs to create or manage storage data or who needs to prevent unintended deletes in storage data or who needs to manage storage data across compute clusters in different AWS regions, then you can use some of the industry leading features that are already provided by S3. And as I already mentioned before, both this set of features, they complement each other. And most of our top customers are planning to use both the set of features simultaneously. Let us now see how we create your S3 backups. In AWS backup, we allow you to define a backup plan. In that backup plan, you can define parameters like what is the backup frequency, what is the backup retention period? You can also specify the backup vault, which is an encrypted loca storage location where all your backups are stored. Once you define your backup plan, you need to assign your S3 buckets to that backup plan. You can also assign other compute storage and database services to the same backup plan. Once you assign your resources to the backup plan, AWS Backup will automatically start creating backups of S3 and other AWS resources. These backups will be securely stored in a backup vault, which is an infrastructure owned by AWS Backup. And whenever you want, you can restore your backups from the backup vault with a few simple clicks or with a single API call. Here's some more detail on the backup experience. We not only back up your S3 buckets and objects, we also back up your object data, your tags, your access control lists, and other user-defined metadata. Also, please note that the first backup is a full backup, 
while the subsequent backups are incremental backups at object level. What this means is that when you create the first backup of your S3 bucket, we take a full snapshot of the S3 bucket. After that, if you add one new object to your S3 bucket in the subsequent backup, we'll capture that incremental change that has happened. This helps you to manage your total cost of ownership for backups in a better way. Now that we saw how you create your backup, let's see how you how we store your backups. We pro protect your backups with multiple layers of security using different features that are available in AWS and some of the advanced features that are available in AWS backup. Here are some of the things you can do to build this multiple layer of security on your backup. Firstly, you can use IAM policies to restrict user access. You can decide. You can use the IAM uh, policies to decide which user needs to access your backup data. Secondly, you can enable multi-factor authentication, which is an available feature in AWS, to make sure that no unintended third party is getting access to your backup data. Thirdly, you can use backup vault lock, which is a feature available in AWS backup, to make your backups immutable. Once you turn on backup vault lock, you cannot delete your backups even when you have root user access. Backup vault lock also prevents malicious actors from re-encrypting your backup data. Talking about encryption, you can encrypt your backup vault using your customer managed key or using Amazon provided key management service key. Once you encrypt your backup vault, all the backups stored in that backup vault will also be encrypted with the same encryption key. Fifthly, you can ensure physical security or digital separation of roles. The IAM role accessing your primary S3 data is different from the IAM role that is accessing your backup data. By ensuring separation of role, you can build another layer of security on your backup. Also, your primary S3 data is stored in your account while your backup data is stored in AWS backups account. So in that way, there's a physical separation between your primary S3 data and your backup data. And last but not the least, you can use some of the advanced features that are available in Backup Audit Manager to manage and track your backup and restore operations. You can also use Backup Audit Manager to generate auditor-friendly reports to demonstrate your backup compliance. So these are some of the ways in which we can cre create a multi-layer of security on your S3 backups. Let us now see how we, you can restore your backups. AWS Backup allows you to restore your backups with a simple click. You can restore S3 buckets, individual folders within S3 buckets, or individual objects within S3 bucket to a specified point in time in the past with a single click. And you can specify the point in time to which you want to restore your backup. There are a lot of flexibilities in the restore experience. We allow you to restore your S3 data to the source S3 bucket from which you you created your backup. You can also restore the S3 backup to another existing S3 bucket, or you can choose to create a new bucket during restore. There are additional flexibilities, like you can change the encryption key of the S3 data during restore. You can also change the IAM role to access the S3 data during restore. And just like backup, we also restore your S3 buckets, your objects, including your object data, your tags, your access control lists, and other user-defined metadata. So our customers store their S3 data in different storage classes. And these are the storage classes from which you can create your backup. If you are using S3 standard, which is used for generally available frequently accessed data, you can create a backup using AWS backup. 
if your S3 data is stored in S3 standard infrequently accessed S3 one zone, S3 one zone infrequently accessed, even then you can create a backup of your S3 data. These three storage classes are used to store infrequently accessed data and you can back that data to AWS backups backup vault. And if you are using the recently announced storage class of S3, S3 Glacier Instant Retrieval, even then you can create a backup of that data and store it in our backup vault. Uh, please note that irrespective of your storage class, all the backups will be stored in the backup vault, which is an infrastructure owned by AWS backup. So your backups will be stored in the same infrastructure with the same security protection around it. Let us now, now see how to get started. It's a very simple two-step process. The first step is to define a backup policy. In the backup policy, you can define parameters like backup retention period, backup window, backup frequency, etc. Once you define your backup policy, you can assign your S3 buckets to the backup policy using tags or using resource IDs. And then you are all set. AWS Backup will automatically start creating your backups. You can manage and monitor your backups using the different dashboards that are available in AWS Backup or using the advanced functionalities that are available in AWS Backup Audit Manager. So this is how you can get started with, with creating S3 backups. So here are the key takeaways. AWS Backup allows you to centrally automate backup for 12 AWS services using Amazon S3. AWS Backup centralizes and automates the data protection across multiple AWS services, and it protects your data with multiple layers of security, and it also allows you to restore your data with a few simple clicks. It, AWS Backup provides you a fully managed go governance and compliance for data protection. You can use the advanced controls in AWS Backup to ensure that your backups are compli compliant with your data protection requirements. So this is it from my side. Thank you everyone for joining. I will now do a demo. Here is my AWS Backup Management Console. Here is my AWS Management Console. If you are using AWS Backup for the first time, you need to go to Storage, and this is where you will see AWS Backup. If you are using AWS Backup for Amazon S3 for the first time, you need to go to Settings. Once you click on Settings, you have the option to configure resources. And here you need to use this toggle buttons to button to enable S3 Backup. It is already enabled in my account. Also, please note that in AWS, we recommend versioning, S3 versioning as the best practice for all S3 users. And hence, we have kept S3 versioning as a prerequisite to creating S3 backups. Now I'll click on confirm. And now AWS backup for S S3 is activated in my account. I will now show how to create a backup plan and assign S3 buckets to the backup plan. So if I go to backup plan, you will see I already have a few backup plans that are running. I will create a new backup plan. Uh, there are three different ways in which I can create a backup plan. Uh, I can use a standard template that AWS Backup provides. I can define a backup plan using a JSON expression, or I can build a backup plan using the console. I'll use the back. I'll build a backup plan here using the console. I need to give a name to the backup plan. Uh, let me call it AWS Backup Demo. Then I need to give a name to the rule I'm creating. Let me call it S3 Backup Demo. You can use the same backup rule to create backups of S3 and other AWS services. So you don't have to create separate backup rules for different resources. And then in the backup rule, I can specify the backup vault where I want my AWS 
backups to be stored. Every AWS region has the default backup vault, uh, but if you want, you can also create new backup vault. And as I said, you can encrypt your backup vault with a customer managed key or with an Amazon provided key management service key and all the backups in that backup vault will also be encrypted. And then I'll specify my backup frequency. So these are some of the frequencies I can specify. For S3 backup, we have an additional option called continuous backups. Continuous backups allow you to restore your S3 data to any point in time in the past 35 days. So in, when you turn on continuous backup, we continuously capture incremental changes in your S3 data. And we create a backups of those incremental changes. And we also allow you to restore the backups to a point in time in the past. And then you can also specify your backup window. Like at what time do you want the backup to start? The, the default backup window is 5 a.m. UTC, but you can customize other backup windows also. And that is it. Uh, right now, for S3 backup, we do not have the capability to transition the backups to cold storage tier. We also do not have the capability to transition the backups to another region. So yeah, these features are not available for S3 backup. And then once you define all these settings in your backup policy, you, you need to create, click create plan. Once you click on create plan, your backup plan is created. Now you can assign your AWS resources to this backup plan so that AWS backup can automatically start creating backups of those resources. To assign resources, you need to go to your backup plan. This is the backup plan I created just now. I will click on assign resources. I need to give a name to this assign resource assignment. Let me call it S3 demo. I need to select the IAM role that I will use to assign the resources to the backup plan. Let me use my default IAM role. Then AWS backup will ask me if I want to assign all my AWS resource to this backup rule or do I want to specify on, do I, or do I need to assign only specific resources? Here in this example, I want to assign only S3 buckets. So I'll click on include specific resource types. Then AWS backup will ask me, what are the resource types that I want to assign to this backup rule? I want to assign my S3 buckets to the backup rule. So I'll select S3 from the drop down. Then AWS backup will ask me whether I want to assign all my S3 buckets or individual S3 buckets to the backup rule. I'll assign only one S3 bucket to the backup rule. So I'll click on this S3 bucket. One question you might be having at this point is, what, you, what if you have thousands of S3 buckets? Do you need to assign each of those S3 buckets individually to the backup rule? The answer is no. You can use tags for that. You can tag your S3 buckets using a key value pair. And then you can use the same key value pair tag here in your resource assignment section. AWS backup will automatically identify the S3 buckets that have the matching tags and those S3 buckets will be automatically assigned to this backup plan. So this is how you can scale your resource, resource assignment when you have hundreds or thousands of S3 buckets. So once I have defined the resource assignment rules, I need to click on assign resources. And I'll get a message saying that your resource assignment has been created successfully and I'm all set. AWS backup will automatically start creating backups of my S3 buckets that have been assigned to this backup plan. I can track the progress of my backup operations using the dashboard in AWS backup. You can see that in the last 24 hours, 18 backup jobs have been successful in my account and no backup job have failed. 
if there is any backup failure, you can turn on SNS notification or event bridge events to notify you of backup failure. And there are some other ways in which you can track your backup. So if you go to backup vault, you will see the different backup vaults you have. And if you click on the backup vault, you will see the backup copies that are being stored. And here you will also see whether the backup is a continuous backup or a periodic backup. Right now you are seeing a portion of my backup vault where I have a bunch of periodic snapshot based backups for S3. If I scroll down, you can see that I have a backup of EC2 in my backup vault. I have some backups of document DB in my, and EFS in my backup vault. So this, this, this is so this is how your backups are stored in the backup vault. And then you can also see which AWS resources are you protecting using AWS backup. For that, you need to click on protected resources. If I click on protected resources, you, I'll see that I'm protecting two EC2 instances, one EBS store, block storage, two EFS file systems, two S3 buckets, and one document DB database. You, in, in my AWS backup account. And when I click on the protected resource, I'll also see how many backups have been created for this particular protected resource. Here you can see the number, number of backups that have been created for my S3 bucket. Now I will show how to restore the S3 backup. For that, I will click on this S3 backup and I'll click on restore. The restore experience is very simple. You can just decide, choose to keep the default restore settings and restore the entire S3 bucket. But if you want to customize your restore setting, you can do some customizations, like you can decide to restore individual items from your S3 bucket. To restore individual objects or individual folders from the S3 bucket, you need to know the S3 URI of that S3 bucket. You can also choose your restore destination. You can decide whether you want to restore your S3 bucket, your S3 backup to the source S3 bucket, or whether you want to restore to another existing S3 bucket. Or whether or you also have the third option to create a new S3 bucket during restore. So these are some of the flexibilities in the restore experience. You can also change the encryption key of your restored S3 bucket or object. Here I'll keep the default options in this example. I'll restore my S3 backup to the source bucket. I'll keep the original encryption key and I'll restore the entire bucket instead of restoring individual items. And I'll also keep my default IAM role for restore. And then I need to click on restore backup. Once I click on restore backup, my restore operation has started. I'll get a notification here in the blue bar, blue panel bar saying that your restore is in progress. If I click on dashboard, I'll see that one restore job is in progress right now. And once my restore operations com gets completed, I'll get a notification here say in the dashboard saying that my restore operation has been completed. So this is how AWS backup works for S3 and other AWS services. It's a simple experience. Thank you for attending the demo. Now I'll open up for questions and answers.